Hi guys and welcome back to the Academy of Historical Fencing and today I'm going to be reviewing and looking at the Sparring Glove Special Model. So this is a sparring glove that's been around for, I don't know, maybe three or four years I'd say approximately and the Sparring Glove Company, um, based in Poland, they've been making what is largely a tournament standard heavy glove in the form of their mitten. So it looks much the same as this but instead of being a five fingered it is a mitten form. They've been making that for a bit longer still. And that largely is a tournament standard and really well regarded for particularly longsword and similar weapons, sword and buckler and that kind of thing. So the Sparring Glove Special as it's called, or, or the Five Finger Model as a lot of people call it, um, been around a few years, it's had a few improvements and I've currently got the current model. So how am I going to be talking about this? Well, for a start, I've owned most of the heavy gloves that are on the market. So pretty much everything from Neyman, for example, including the Armadillos, um, both versions of the Conan gloves. Um, I've had two, two batches of the mittens from Sparring Glove Company. Obviously now got these. Um, Spez mittens. I've used all sorts. There are very, very few now that I haven't used. So these are the majority of heavy gloves that are out there. And um, so a bit more about the company. First of all, they're called the Sparring Glove Company, which is frankly a really annoying and difficult name because people ask you, who are these sparring gloves made by? And you say sparring gloves, and they say, but yeah, but who are they made by? Sparring gloves. It's, it's, it's not exactly a very good name. They really could do with upgrading that a little bit because it's not a very helpful name. Of course, all sparring gloves get called sparring gloves, so it's not exactly ideal. Anyway, um, so I've used pretty much all the heavy gloves that are on offer on the market. Um, and I do train with certainly most of the weapons that you see in, in HEMA today I use at some point and obviously I favour things like military sabre um, and side sword and things like that but I do still practice long sword and sword and buckler and all sorts and pole arms so I have a really um, wide variety of weapon usage um, which means I can push these gloves through all different types of combat and I have experience using a wide range of heavy glove options so I'm in a good place to review them, I would say. Um, Wi-Fi finger gloves. Well, should be kind of obvious, really. It's, it's all down to dexterity. And when it comes to uh, most forms of swordsmanship, most sword practitioners, we want to be as dexterous as you would be if you were using the sword for real. And if you were just going to emphasize protection, then you would wear mittens inevitably because mittens give you fantastic protection you've got big clam shells that encase all of the fingers they spread the energy and dissipate it. it there are less component parts to get damaged you've got more spread of damage over each finger so a mitten ultimately offers the best level protection there is so it's logical if you wanted maximum protection you'd get a mitten that makes sense but if there are other things to consider because maximum protection isn't all that there is in the HEMA game. Um, what about dexterity and weight um, and, and different grip forms and all of these things and ultimately mittens are not a great glove for a lot of other HEMA practitioners so if you do exclusively or majority longsword then you'll probably find that the sparring glove mitten is really good for you. I still don't actually like them because I'm not a big fan of mittens but I've had them and I respect the fact that they are a good glove and they do work well. But if you do a lot of other stuff, one-handed swords um, that require different grips, more dexterity and that kind of thing, so particularly if you do saber, um, side sword especially because you've got to get the index finger over the quillen, but even a lot of arming sword stuff, so sword and buckler where you just need a good bit of dexterity and I would say meta as well, I'm not happy with uh, mittens for, for that either, then you need something that is better than a mitten in forms of dexterity and movement and grip shifts and that kind of thing. And that's where this kind of thing comes in. Um, so my opinion is that we need a five finger glove. Even if you're a long sworder and you're happy with your, your mittens, for anybody doing most other styles, we need something else. And it is important. I mean, we get, get by with the Red Dragon gloves as a medium glove, because that is specifically what the Red Dragon is. It is a medium glove, which means it's well suited to a lot of synthetic sparring and steel sparring where you have quite a sizable bit of protection on the hilt um, so you know some kind of 
side sword perhaps even then they're limited with the, with the red dragons but bolt hilted sabers certainly if you've got something that is has some protection but it's still relatively open like a stirrup hilt saber or a simple form of side sword for example then they offer a little bit more hand protection than the earlier period swords but not so much that you know you can get away with a medium weight glove for heavy sparring so we need a heavy glove um, now just before I start this there are people that would say don't ever buy the five finger glove I've broken my fingers in them and I would say that's a legitimate concern without a doubt um, I'd also say that I've known people break their fingers in every single heavy glove that's on the market um, so, that, so you, that has to be considered as well and, and, and also that I'm not necessarily recommending them as a replacement for the mitten as I said if you want to do high contact longsword at the moment go and buy the mitten. If you want to do other weapons or use your gloves for a variety of purposes then possibly consider something like this. Okay so um, this glove I have kind of a love-hate relationship with it I would say and I've used these quite a lot. Um, I'm going to just do an overview of what they are first of all and then I'll do my likes and dislikes. So what they are is these sections that are kind of matte finish this is what they call uh, what is called styrogum which is um, like a shoe sole material so it's a formable um, high density material that is really light and yet almost acts as solid armor so it has massive protection qualities despite the fact that it's incredibly light and can be formed quite easily and still has a, you know, a reasonable degree of flexibility so this is actually a fantastic material really really good and you can see it there on the base of the thumb uh, and it makes up quite a few component parts around the back of the hand as well. So that's styrogum, that's an outstanding material. Really, really good. Then you have this kind of um, uh, synthetic material of some kind, maybe some kind of canvasy type material, uh, which contains plastic um, bands that go around the wrist. And you can see there, if you stretch it out completely, the stitching in the gaps therefore has no protection at all but by nature of the fact that they're always shifting and moving like this you've got overlapping plates and a good level of protection but we'll come back to that protection a little bit later and then on the hand you've got the styrogum and then the, and this kind of canvasy type uh, it's like a webbing material actually um, that holds it all together and the thumb is um, the actual thumb tip is solid plastic really heavy juicy that then takes us to the fingers the actual fingers are uh, resin so this is um, like a resin glue if you like so um, you let it set it goes hard like, a, like an epoxy resin um, and that means that they are completely hard there's there's no real flex in those at all um, which you might think would restrict movement it doesn't necessarily but again we'll get back on to the movement later on finally internally you've got a glove that is sewn in so this this does not come out it, it comes out of the thumb but it doesn't come out of the glove it's all sewn in so this um, is like a gardening glove, probably is a gardening glove by the looks. So that's what the actual glove is. And therefore let's get on to my likes with this glove. Well first of all it's super light and I love light gloves. I love light kit personally generally anyway because almost everything that we practice is unarmoured combat and therefore I want my gear to be as close to an unarmoured fight as I can possibly get. So I want something that is as close to not wearing a glove or, or something like that as possible and they are really really light as light as you could really hope for for a heavy glove but, you know they're in the kind of red dragon range of lightness which is excellent now on to size which is another thing that I really do quite like they are very slimline and this is largely helped by the fact that the fingers are quite small and the wrist is really compact as well as the actual forearm protection here is very very fitted to the hand so overall as a heavy glove it's about as as small as they get at the moment and I know there are people like um, just the thumb in there I know there are people like Thok that are working on something that sh you know should be smaller again in theory we'll have to see how the final production model is but they are quite compact um, very compact for a heavy glove certainly smaller than all the other things that are out there um, so those are things that I really really like now the wrist mobility I find that it's actually really really good 
I was always concerned with a glove. I, ne I never previously liked gloves that encased onto the forearm. I wanted a bit like a red dragon glove. In fact, I cut out parts of the red dragon glove. I like it to be free floating so that it just moves around, or maybe like an hourglass design, for example, so it doesn't clamp down onto the, the wrist or the forearm. That's generally been my preference. But in using these gloves, I found that I don't really notice much in the way of restriction of movement. I mean, there's always going to be a, a small amount. But when I'm in the fight, I don't notice any issues with the wrist articulation at all once you've worn them for just a few weeks of wearing them in and this softens up and that's, that wrist mobility is excellent. So I really like this. This is really nice and fitted and slimline, excellent movement. The protection here on the forearm is absolutely fantastic. That's more forearm protection than I have in lots of my other setups. You can obviously see that it doesn't protect the elbow, so you're going to have to use an elbow guard and most people combine this cuff with a standard Spez Red Dragon similar plastic elbow guard which fits straight onto most jackets. And this is the standard cuff length by the way. They do a short which is about there um, and they do an extended one which goes all the way around the elbow which is sort of interesting but I'd have to try it to really know how I feel about that long cuff. I'm a little skeptical of long cuffs. Anyway, so that's things that I really like. Um, the styrogun being on the top of the thumb, the back of the hand, that's all outstanding protection. The plastic thumb actually works really well, so it's completely solid. It only hinges at this styrogun section here on, where it's actually laced in. And in fact, I can get to different grips with this and I'm quite comfortable with it. It works quite well and it offers fantastic protection. And I don't know if you can see that there, but it has taken some very heavy hits actually. Um, and I've never suffered any injuries through that, so the thumb is fantastic. Whilst we're on the subject of protection, let's get onto these fingertips. So on the fingers, initially you've got the protection from the styrogum up here. So the knuckles, the initial knuckles and the tops of the fingers are protected by styrogum. Fantastic, as much protection as you could hope for. After that, so from the middle knuckle onwards, you go to this resin, which is just glued straight onto a gardening glove. And this is where the five finger glove gets a lot of criticism from people within the human community. And people have found it cracking um, and a few broken fingers as have been mentioned. They have thickened the amount of glue um, and that's supposed to help. And I know some people have had it break and save their fingers and they just re-glue it because it's resin so you put more resin on. So you'll have to decide whether that's enough protection for you. My opinion on it is, if you're going to go into a high contact longsword tournament, you wouldn't wear these gloves. If you were going to do sparring with sword and buckler and saber and longsword with people who aren't going to be going wild, then these gloves are still for you. That's my opinion. But with a five finger glove, you do have slightly more risk of injury than a mitten. So you, you do have to accept that. Okay. Are there risks of points going into here? Of course there are, that's another compromise that a five finger glove has. I've never suffered it, but it, 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 is, a, it is a risk. Um, and what else have we got? Well, if I take it off, which I will add, taking them off is a pain in the ass. Unfortunately, this is dry at the moment. Once it gets sweaty, it's <laughs> difficult. I can't actually take the inner glove out, but I can get it out a little bit so you can see in here you've also got padded foam section going onto the back of the hand so that adds a little bit of protection, additional protection to the back of the hand which is kind of nice, I'm not sure it's completely necessary because the styrogum is so good but it doesn't take up much space. So that's the good. The good is wrist mobility is excellent, protection is generally excellent um, and yeah the weight and size of them is very good. Now what do I not like about them? Because I said this is a love-hate thing. And hopefully you've already seen, well not necessarily hopefully, you've probably already seen this cut section here, the t torn stitching here, um, the stitching gone here. So you've seen those issues. I'd actually say those are the, the least of this glove's issues actually. So why has that happened? Well this one has gone because when they come as new 
the, the inner glove is sewn in to such an extreme degree that you can barely move your hand. And I had to cut some of the stitches at the base of the thumb or I just couldn't even move the hand and do anything. So they had to be cut and as a result this one started to come as fray and come out here. Although this could easily be restitched. So that's really not a big deal. Could fix that in a few minutes. Now the one at the top here that is because I've been using it with um, sabers. So what has happened is this. I have used it with stirrup hilt sabers. This is actually an oversized grip balefire, a good bit larger than any of the other ones that I've got. And this has happened. And the knuckle bow has cut in to the glove there, which if I'd used it with this particular saber, that wouldn't have happened because it's big enough, but it really is oversized. It's much larger than normal, really a lot larger than normal. Um, so that is an issue. Um, I'll also say at this point with grips, I haven't got a side sword to show you, but I'm going to show you a slight annoyance with the side sword, is that if you need to wrap the index finger over the guard like this, that thumb plate hits straight up against the quill and, and forces your thumb away from the guard, so it's kind of uncomfortable and strains the grip to grip a side sword if you have to wrap the index finger. Um, the next part of my love-hate thing was the resin. So far, I've taken some heavy shots, never taken injury, never cracked it. I'm sure it can crack, but only yesterday, taking the skin off there. Every time I use these gloves, they somehow manage to hurt me. It's usually something like um, taking some skin off like this, cramping my hand because I'm having to grip so tight. So it varies. I get away with it sometimes, but it usually finds some way to hurt me, even though I'm not getting hurt by, um, by actually sword strikes. The protection has been excellent, but I'm getting hurt by just wearing them. So, um, what else is there to really talk about? Yes, the um, inner glove. So, this inner glove, as I said, is a clearly a gardening glove. Now, I suspect the reason that they've used a gardening glove is because it needed to be porous for the resin to really stick well. Because if you use a resin on something smoother, it can basically just crack off and chip off. So I suspect that's why they've done it. But what that actually means is it grips horribly. So this gardening glove slides and slips on everything, unless you happen to have a hilt that is encased enough that it locks it in. But generally, it slips and slides and that is damn annoying. Um, so, how do I feel about them? Because I've given you the pros and the cons, um, and what do I therefore think of them? Well, it's it's kind of a difficult one. Is they're the only five finger gloves that I've so far used that I feel that I go back to and use again much of, much at all, because um, most of the heavy gloves I tried too unwieldy, too heavy, too large, too cumbersome, awful grip. So whatever problems this one has is usually a, a, a lot worse in every other glove type that's five finger that I've used. So, um, I say that the best five finger glove that is currently on the market doesn't mean that they are um, wonderful, but it means that they are pretty decent. So I'm not at all wholly happy with them. Um, there are some risks to the fingers. The inner glove is awful material. Um, they do rub and wear me constantly, which also is a concern for extended sparring days and events because you don't want to be taken out of action early on. So um, when I go to events, I normally use my Red Dragons with fingertip protectors in. Even though there's an increased risk to injury, um, there's less risk of actually the glove hurting me. So I'll last you know, all day, all weekend doing sparring. And that means that they don't necessarily get a huge amount of use. So in fact, what this glove has become for me is I use this as my side sword glove. So when I'm doing uh, steel side sword fencing uh, at our club and some long sword fencing, even though I don't do so much of that anymore, and occasionally sword and buckler. And yet for 
for everything else, I use my red dragons with modifications. Whether you know whether I'm doing a stirrup hilt saber like this or some kind of um, arm and sword or side sword and buckler, and therefore, would I recommend buying them? If you absolutely need a heavy glove that is five finger at the moment, yes. Do I think they are great? Not really. They they they're decent. They're okay. They will hurt you. They're not perfect at the job they do, but they are a five finger heavy glove that does the job where most of the others from for most people I don't feel do actually do the job. So we need better gloves at the moment and I really hope people like Thok gets on that and does a good job of it. I I've seen the photos of this and the videos. I hope they are what we see um, in those photos and videos because right now this is the best option of the five finger heavy gloves and yet it's not great but it's decent and I think I I love actually so much of it you know the forearm the wrist section the back of the hand the thumb if they could actually change somehow the way the fingers are done and the, the actual um, the glove the inner glove it would probably be a really good glove so they do keep advancing they keep developing um, the, this product so maybe they could make it a lot better so there's my review is I would recommend buying them if if that suits your particular requirements or your needs um, but they are certainly not without issue so I hope you have enjoyed the video and uh, if you haven't subscribed already please do so